The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, rhapsodized by Persephone. True. Nervous. Very, very I had been and nervous. am. But why will you say that I am mad? Mad. mad. The disease had sharpened my senses. Not destroyed. Not dulled them. Above all, the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in I the heaven many things and in, hell. in the earth. How then am I mad? Hearken. 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 And observe how healthily. How calmly I can tell you the whole story. Mm-hmm. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted my day and night. Object there was none. Passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, Yes, it was this. this. He had the eye of a vulture. Pale blue eye. With a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, I made up my mind. To take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now this is the point. You fancy me mad. Mad men know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what caution. With what foresight. With what dissemination I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I, I killed, killed him. him. And every night, about midnight, tick, I turned the latch tick, of his door tick, and opened it, tick, oh, tick, so tick, gently. Yeah. And then when I made an opening sufficient for my head, I put in a dark closed. Lantern, All closed. That no light shone out. And then I thrust in my head. Oh. <laughs> you would have laughed to see how cunningly I thrust it in. I moved it slowly. Very, so very that I slowly. might not disturb the old man's sleep. It took me an hour tuck, to place tuck, my whole head tuck, within the opening. Tuck. So far that I could see him tick, as he lay tick, upon his bed. Tick, ha! ha. Would a madman have been so wise as this? And then, and then, when my head was well in the room, I undid the lantern cautiously. Oh, so cautiously. Cautiously, the hinges creaked. I knit just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. And this I did for seven long nights. And every night, just tick, at midnight. Tick, but tick, I found the eye always closed. And so it was impossible to do the work. For it was not the old man who vexed me. But, but his, his evil, evil eye. eye. And every morning. When the day broke. I went boldly into his chamber and spoke courageously to him. Calling him by name in a hearty tone. And inquiring how he had passed the night. So you see, he would have to be a very profound Indeed. old man. Indeed. suspects that every night. Tick. tick just tick, at twelve. Tick, I looked upon tick, him as he tick, slept. Tick. Tick. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. Tick. A tuck, watch's minute hand tuck, moved more quickly tuck, than did mine. Tick. Never before tuck, that night had I felt the extent of my own powers. Of my sagacity. <laughs> I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. To think there I was, opening the door. <laughs> little by little. And he not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. I fairly chuckled at the idea. <laughs> and perhaps he heard me. For he moved in the bed suddenly. As if startled. Now you may think I drew back. But no. His room was as black as pitch with the thick darkness. For his shutters were closed fastened through fear of robbers. And so I knew. I knew he could not see the opening of the door, and I kept pushing on it steadily. 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 I had my head in. And was about to open the lantern. When my thumb slipped upon the tin fastening. And the old man sprang up in bed. Crying out, Who's there? I kept quiet and said nothing. 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 For a whole hour I did not move a muscle. And in the meantime I did not hear him lie down. He was still sitting up in bed, listening. Tick. Just as I had done. Night after night, hearkening to the death watch on the wall. Presently, I heard a slight groan. And knew it was the groan of mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain. (sighs) Or a groan of grief. (sighs) Oh no. It was a low, stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. I knew that sound well. Many a night just at midnight. slept, it welled up from my own bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo. 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 The terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt. And pitied him, although I chuckled in <laughs> heart. I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first slight noise. When he had turned in the bed. His fears His had been fears ever since, ever since growing upon him. had been ever since growing upon him. He had been trying to fancy them causeless. 
but could not. He had been saying to himself, It is nothing but the wind. It is only a mouse crossing the floor. It is a single chirp. Yes, he had been trying to comfort himself with these suppositions. But he had found it all All in in vain. Because death in approaching him had stopped with his black shadow before him. And enveloped the victim. And it was the mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he neither saw nor heard, to feel the presence of my head within the door. When I had waited a long very time, patiently, without hearing him lie down, I resolved to open a, a little very, crevice very in little. the lantern. So I opened it. You cannot imagine how stealthily, stealthily, until at length a single dim ray, like the thread of the spider, shot from out the crevice and fell upon the, the vulture eye. eye. It was open. Wide. Wide open. I grew furious as I gazed upon it. I saw it with perfect distinctness. All a dull blue. With a hideous veil that chills the very marrow of my bones. But I could see nothing else of the old man's face or person. For I had directed the ray as if by instinct. Precisely upon the damned spot. And have I not told you that what you mistake for madness, madness is but over-acuteness of the senses? And then came to my ears a low, dull, quick sound. Much as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I knew that sound well, too. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates a soldier into courage. But even yet I refrained and kept still. I scarcely breathed. I held the lantern motionless. And tried how steadily I could maintain the ray upon the eye. Meantime, the hellish tattoo of the heart increased. It grew quicker and And louder and louder. Every instant. The old man's terror must have been extreme. It grew louder. I say louder every moment. Do you mark me well when I tell you that I am nervous? So I am. And now at the dead hour of the night, amid the dreadful silence of that old house, so strange a sound as this excited me to an uncontrollable terror. Yet for some minutes longer I refrained and stood still. But the beating grew louder. Louder! I thought the heart must burst. And now a new anxiety seized me. The sound would be heard by a neighbor. The old man's hour had come. With a yell. Ah! I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once. Ah! Only once. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. I then smiled gaily to find the deed done, but... For many minutes, the heart beat on with a muffled sound. This, however, did not vex me. It would not be heard through the wall. At length, it ceased. The old man was dead. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Yes, he was stone... Stone dead. I placed my hand upon the heart and held it there many minutes. There was no pulsation. He was stone dead. His eye would trouble me no more. If you still think me mad, you will think so no longer when I describe the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. The night waned. And I worked hastily. But in silence. 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 First of all, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head and the arms and the legs. I then took up three planks from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. I then replaced the board so cleverly, oh, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. There was nothing to wash no out. No stain of any kind. No blood spot whatsoever. I had been too wary for that. A tub had caught all. <laughs> <laughs> when I had made an end of these labors, it was four o'clock. Still dark as dong, midnight. Dong, as the bell sounded dong, the hour. There came a knocking at the street door. I went down to open it with a light heart. For what had I now to fear? There entered three men. Who introduced themselves with perfect suavity. As officers of the police. A shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicion of foul play had been aroused. Information had been lodged at the police office. And they had been deputed to search the premises. I smiled. For what had I now to fear? I bade the gentlemen welcome. The shriek, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man, I mentioned, was absent in the country. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search. Search well. I led them at length to his chamber. I showed them his treasures. Secure. Undisturbed. In the enthusiasm of my confidence. I brought chairs into the room. And desired them here to rest from their fatigues. While I myself, in the wild audacity of my perfect triumph, I placed my own seat upon the very spot beneath which reposed the corpse of the victim. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. I was singularly at ease. They sat, and while I answered cheerily, they chatted of familiar things. But, ere long... I felt myself getting pale. And wished them gone. My head ached. And I fancied a ringing in my ears. But still they sat and chatted. The ringing became more distinct. It continued and became more distinct. 
I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling. But it continued and gained definiteness. Until at length, I found that the ringing was not within my ears. No doubt, I now grew very pale. But I talked more fluently and with a heightened voice. Yet the sound increased. And what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound. Much such a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I gasped for breath. (gasps) And yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly. More vehemently. But the noise steadily increased. I arose and argued about trifles. In a high key with violent gesticulations. But the noise steadily increased. Why would they not be gone? I paced to and fro with heavy strides. As if excited to fury by the observation of the men. But the noise steadily increased. Oh God. What could I do? I foamed. I raved. I swore. I swung the chair upon which I had been sitting. And it grated upon the boards. But the noise rose over all and continually increased. It grew louder. 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 And the men chatted pleasantly and smiled was it possible they heard it not almighty god no no they heard they suspected they They were making a mockery of my horror this i thought and this i think but anything was better than this agony anything was more tolerable than this derision i could bear those hypocritical smiles no longer i felt it was scream or die and now again hark louder 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 villain i shrieked dissemble no more i admit the deed tear up the plank here here it is the beating of his 